Hi everybody, today I'm gonna talk about the meniscal anatomy on the MRI of the knee. One of the most important topics before we hit the road to talk about the meniscal lesions on the MRI. And I know there are, there are very similarities between the medial and lateral meniscus, but there are some key anatomic differences between them. So first, let's talk about the similarities between the medial and the lateral meniscus. They are very important. They are. Uh, I'm gonna talk about the basis of the 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 normal meniscus the normal meniscal evaluation on the MRI so let's go over that first the meniscus they must have low signal intensity in all clinical sequences that's the first point the second one they must have a triangular shape in the short axis okay the anterior horn and the posterior horn on the sagittal plane and the meniscal body on the coronal plane and the meniscus they are always wider than higher in the short axis and the tibial margin is plain and the femoral or superior margin is slightly concave or oblique in order to accommodate the femoral condyles and that, so that's the basis of the normal meniscus on the MRI of the knee and when things go bad when we have uh, meniscal lesions or uh, we can have a, a break in one of these two rules like the low signal intensity in all clinical sequences we can have a high signal intensity inside the meniscus and this could be a meniscal degeneration and when this high signal intensity it touches one of the articular surfaces it, we can have a meniscal tear so that's it, it, it's one rule that was broken and the, the other rule the triangular shape in the short axis when we have a, a break on this rule we can also be facing a meniscal lesion okay so of course there are some exceptions like the post-surgical meniscus and the pediatric meniscus the meniscus of young patients but I will save that for other videos. And now I'd like to show you the a normal uh, medial meniscus on the sagittal plane. We can see here the anterior horn and the posterior horn on the short axis. And we can see the meniscal body on the long axis. Here is the uh, anterior meniscal root ligament. And here is the posterior meniscal root ligament. I'm not gonna talk about the meniscal root ligaments right now. I'm gonna save that for other video too. And so here we can see, by the way, this bow time morphology, the classical bow time morphology that we can appreciate on the MRI of the knee when we are analyzing the menisci on the uh, sagittal plane. And for the lateral meniscus, it's the same thing. Here's the lateral meniscus. We can see the anterior horn, the posterior horn, the bow time morphology. Uh, here is the meniscal body on the long axis. And here we have the anterior root ligament of the lateral meniscus, very close neighbor of the uh, uh, of the ACL, the anterior cruciate ligament. And here's the posterior horn, the, the posterior root ligament of the lateral meniscus. Is that trick one? This is a trick one to find but we can find it when we uh, triangulate between the sagittal and coronal plane we can see the the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus as well and now i'd like to show the menisci on the coronal plane and here in the coronal plane uh, we have the meniscal body on the short axis so here's the lateral meniscus here's the medial meniscus so we can see this triangular uh, morphology and low signal intensity in all uh, no clinical sequences in this sequence here that we are that I'm showing you. So that's uh, a normal lateral meniscus and a normal medial meniscus. We can appreciate that the, the anterior horn, the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus, they have this uh, the, in, on the long axis, this have this flat morphology. Uh, I, I usually call that like a pancake like morphology that we can see on the, uh, especially on the posterior horn of the medial and lateral meniscus. Okay. Um, now let's talk about the differences between the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. Okay. First, the first part of this video, I've talked about the similarities. They are very important, but let's talk about the difference. Let's put some, some sauce on this, on this video. And on the medial side, one of the differences that I'd like to talk to you today 
is the morphology of the medial meniscus and the lateral meniscus. Uh, the medial meniscus, it has a C-shaped format, and the lateral meniscus has an O-shaped format. So the medial meniscus is more open, and it reflects uh, 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 the position of the, the meniscal root ligaments. They are located more peripherally, and the lateral meniscus is more closed has this O-shaped appearance, uh, morphology, so the the root ligaments are more closed, are more lo are located more centrally on the tibial plateau, and the medial meniscus it covers about 50 to 70 percent of the medial tibial plateau, and the lateral meniscus covers about 70 to 80 percent of the lateral tibial plateau and it has a practical uh meaning because many research researchers ha uh, have uh described that uh lesions of the lateral meniscus can be more harmful to the lateral compartment than lesions of the medial compart or medial meniscus to the medial compartment because of the strong dependence of the of the medial lateral compartment on the lateral meniscus okay and the last difference that i'd like to talk to you is the proportionality between the anterior horn and the posterior horn of the menisci on the lateral side the anterior horn and the posterior horns they have the same the, the they have similar size they have almost or they have the same size so on the lateral side the anterior horn the posterior horn they have the same si they have the same size on the medial side it's different okay in the medial side the posterior horn is larger the posterior horn is bigger than the anterior horn and when we are analyzing the mri of the knee if we if we, we see that there are some kind of uh, anatomic difference between this uh the anterior horn the posterior horn that that does not match this description that i'm telling you here it can be a sign of a meniscal lesions for example here we have the lateral meniscus and the medial meniscus on the sagittal plane you can notice that the anterior horn the posterior horn of the lateral meniscus they have the same size and the anterior horn of the medial meniscus is smaller and the posterior horn of the lateral the medial meniscus uh, it's larger than the anterior horn so uh, for example for the lateral size if i see that the anterior horn or the posterior horn is larger is bigger than the 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 opposite horn this is a sign of lesion or that something happened like um, a, a a meniscal surgery for example uh, it could be and uh, for the medial side if i know if i notice that the posterior horn has the same size than the anterior horn or or is even smaller this is also a sign that something is wrong okay so keep that in mind and just uh, uh, before we finish this video just a few words about the axial plane uh here is an axial plane to the sequence we can see the the lateral meniscus here the medial meniscus here and it, sometimes it's hard to 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 identify uh with a high resolution the menisci on the axial plane in the 2d sequences but now we have the 3d sequences and the evaluation of the menisci on the axial plane they are much better now so here you can see the the lateral meniscus the lateral meniscus on this uh reconstructed 3d image on the axial plane and here is the medial meniscus here is the part of the posterior horn of the medial meniscus on this reconstructed uh axial plane uh 3d sequence acquired a 3d sequence and reconstructed in the axial plane okay so for me sometimes to analyze the menisci uh on the axial plane the 2d is like this and the 3d sequences are much better so i recommend everybody if you have the opportunity to do that in your machine in your clinic uh, use 3, 3d sequences to analyze the menisci on the axial plane at least and to wrap up uh, i just want to say that there are so many layers about the meniscal anatomy this was just the basic layer like the foundation but i think it's the the most important one and but i i, I haven't talked about the meniscal root ligaments 
um, I didn't uh, I I didn't uh, go deep on that on this video meniscal femoral ligaments and meniscal tibial ligaments and so on but I will save that for other for upcoming videos okay so that's it for today thank you for your time have a great day i will put some references uh or some papers or where you can find more about the menisco anatomy or where i uh, uh where i read some of the of the content that i'm putting here in this video so you can go deeper if you want